how did you leverage your YouTube to drive traffic, you know, to your beat stars? At first, when I got into YouTube, it was in 2014. I had an account and I only uploaded like a remix of, uh, and I, ironically, it was a Logic song. I remixed one of Logic songs because I was into it. And I just remixed this beat and I just put Rock T remix. And then that beat ended up getting like a lot of views. Like I got 20,000 views within a couple of months. And that was my first video. So I was like, oh, you know, maybe wow. I should keep doing this beat stuff. You know, maybe people like, really like my beats. It was getting a lot of comments. And then I, and it wasn't tight beats at first. It was just edits and remixes of different beats. And then it went into my own beats. And then from there, I started noticing the tight beat trend blowing up more. I didn't get a grasp of it until 2017. And that's whenever I rebranded myself into making tight beats. And then that's what really raised uh, my channel to where it's at today because the audience is most likely a lot of people who are tuned in with my tight beats. Hell yeah. Okay. So let me, let, let's clarify something while we're talking about tight beats, right? So in your opinion, both of you guys, I'll, I'll start with you, Roxy, just because we were talking to you. Did your music change at all? before you started from when you were not using tight beat SEO until it's after, like when you started using it was the music, obviously the music is going to transpire and you're going to get better as time goes. But I mean, like the overall way you approach and your creativeness, did it ever change in that time frame? Yeah, I'd say it changed it for the better because back then I used to go into the music thinking I need to make a rock T sounding track. But to be honest, like, I think it's good to understand what artists you're working with and build around them and cater to them more than yourself so that the artist can really shine. You know, just be somebody that's easy to work with. And I think through making tight beats, that helped me get familiar with different types of styles and flows. Back then, I used to just make a certain flow for me that I was just boxed in. And I think once I started learning about different types of beats and different types of ways you can create beats, that's what ultimately pushed me to be more creative with making music. For sure. No, dude, that's valid, valid points. I guess my point too was that you're still you though, right? You're still Rock T. Yes, you can you can look at stuff, right, and say, you know, this this style or this trend or whatever it is, this artist, you know, fits fits what I want to do or at least, you know, inspires me. But at the end of the day, you're still creating music for the love of the music, right? You're still creating yeah. it because you love doing it and and, you know, you, you just want to be able to get your stuff to the right people and heard by the right people. So I guess my overall point, man, was that, you know, people use the tight beat terminology so much. But to me, um, it, it's been around forever. It's it's really just a, a way to use SEO one online. But even just in general, I mean, dude, I remember being we're talking 1990 something, dude, probably 1995, six, seven being in the studio and people playing beats and you know, my, my, my guys, older guys asked me like, yo, 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 young trampy. What do you, what do you hear on this? I'm like, Oh, I hear, I hear Nas spitting on this. Like that's tight beats right there. Like you're literally just picturing what you hear and putting it on there instead. Now you're just putting it in the title or the descriptions and things like that. So um, I just, I just kind of, kind of wanted to point that out, man. And I think that, yeah. Um, you know, you guys are talking about tight beats, but I think realistically, you're still being yourselves, you're still being creative, you're not copying people, because I know that's like the stigma a lot of times when people talk about tight beats, it's like, oh, they're copycat producers. Not at all. Um, and I think everybody probably watching the show already understands that, but I just wanted to point that out.